Hey, what's going on, guys? Calvin Russell here. Super excited yet again to bring you all uh, just a phenomenal person uh, that I've been, uh, you know, I've been making great friends with uh, for quite some time. And he actually started off by watching uh, the original 850 Club Credit uh, Consultation uh, YouTube channel. And of course, watching the videos and reached out to me and ended up doing business with me as well to end up buying property, things of that sort. But I had no idea. I had no idea that he had created such um, a successful business on the side, um, you know, away from, you know, um, his full time job, his regular family schedule and was able to bring in an additional fifty thousand dollars plus. OK, um, you know, as a wholesaler. All right. So if any of you all are looking to learn more about the wholesaling space and you're just thinking to yourself, man, I don't know if I want to do this full time. I don't know if I have the time to do it part time, but you can actually hear his story and learn how you could do it on a part time, spare time basis and bring in that additional income. OK, but again, you guys know how I do it. You don't have to hear from me. I want you guys to hear straight from the source. So I want to introduce you guys to uh, Mr. Dayon. Uh, Dayon, can you hear me okay? I hear you fine. What's going on, Calvin? All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, first off, I want to thank you so much uh, for being here today on the 8020 podcast. Um, I you know, appreciate you taking out the time. I know you could be doing whatever you normally do around about this time, uh, but we greatly appreciate you being here, man. No, I appreciate you inviting me, man. I, I've been watching you for some years, like you said, on YouTube, and it's it's really a great feeling to be on the other end and, you know, working with you and connecting with you, man. So I, I appreciate you. Awesome. Awesome, man. Absolutely. Well, let's give the people what they want to hear, man. So uh, so first thing first, um, how did you even get into um, the real estate or the wholesale industry? Uh, so I grew up kind of in the real estate industry uh, as a kid. My dad owned some buildings in Dalton and Harvey. Uh, you know, for people that don't know, it's the south suburbs of right outside of Chicago. So I grew up having to go clean up the property. And uh, pretty much, long story short, I think that's what sparked me wanting to get into it without even knowing that I wanted to get into it, necessarily being a landlord. But I yeah. think as a kid, just seeing him be a landlord kind of just innately just put it in the back of my head that this is something that I probably should be doing as an adult. But as far as specifically wholesaling, um, how I found out about wholesaling is I was working part-time at Amazon and I was working part-time at a car wash called Delta Sonic. Hmm. And um, I was in my late twenties. And one particular day I was working with a guy who was around my same age and usually a car wash job at this particular one is usually like a high schooler job. Yeah. So me and him was a little bit older than the most people working there. So when we worked together, we kind of hit it off because, you know, our age was in common. And yeah. so we were kind of, one day we were just talking about what was our next steps in life. And I was telling him that stocks and real estate was something that I always wanted to get into, but I, I told him that I'm like, man, I, I don't have the money to get in real estate right now. So right now I'm just really studying, you know, studying stocks. And he was like, man, I know how to get into real estate with no cash, no credit. You don't need none of that. And I was like, do tell, you know, right. like, we all day, bro. We watching cars all day. And right. so he was telling me about this strategy and it seemed like it was a scam or whatever, but I was really intrigued about what he was talking about. So I was so excited. I went home that night after work. And I was Googling what he was saying. And sure enough, it was called wholesaling. And mm. from there on, dude, I caught that bug. And this was like 2016, 2017, mm. when I first when he first told me about it. And I got the YouTube in it. And yeah. that's pretty that's pretty much how I found out about wholesaling. Wow. wow. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy, you know, man. So it sounds like we got to get your dad on here one time, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. He just um he actually sold me, I, me and my fiance just brought our first rental last year and renovated it. And we wow. bought it subject to from him. Mm. You know, he know that I'm in real estate and he was like, man, Dayan, what's the comps on this? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a tired landlord. Essentially, I'm ready to get rid of this house. And, uh, you know, my fiance was like, uh, how much is his mortgage and how much is he renting it out for? Yeah. And she saw that profit and she was like, well, ask him if maybe he'll sell it to us subject to. Right. Sure enough, he was like, he know, like, man, I didn't even think about that. But if y'all want to buy it, y'all got wow. the money to renovate it. Yeah. Go ahead. So. No, you definitely need to holler at my dad, though. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. But you know, what's crazy is that, uh, man, you dropped so many nuggets just 
in that little piece because I think that um, people have to understand that opportunities come to them in different forms, if not every day, every month for sure, in just mm-hmm. different facets of life. And that person that was <clears throat> that was at the car wash at the same time as you that piqued that interest, people have conversations like that all the time. And but for you to to catch that, for you to say, you know what, mm-hmm. I'm interested. I'm going to dig more into this. And then for it to turn into what it's turned into, what's that? In the last seven years, I'm sure you didn't see all that coming. No, and now that you say that, that is crazy. Like, that's literally how I found out about wholesaling, just working at a car wash next to a dude who said he yeah. he used to wholesale. And like you said, I took that info knowing that I wanted to get into real estate, and I yeah. just ran with it. I was hungry at that time in my life. I was at that kind of like that, that start over stage. Like I said, I was in my late 20s, 27, yeah. 28, something like that, staying at home with my parents, just trying to get back on my feet, working two part-time jobs and Man, wholesale, you know, wholesaling yeah. really got me to where I, you know, it's getting yeah. me there. So, yeah, that's it's, it's, it's very exciting to really think awesome. back on how I even found out about it. Yeah, man, time goes by fast. Yep, <laughs> yep, absolutely. So now let's go into this. Um, I know that some of the people that's watching this video, um, they may have interest in wholesaling mm-hmm. or they may have heard about it or there may be some people that have already kind of quote unquote started in the wholesaling kind of situation. Um, what would you, what would be like, um, or let me ask this, how are you even able to make extra income as a wholesaler? When I, cause I know you, you got a full-time job, mm-hmm. you have, you know, <laughs> you have your fiance, you got two kids, a regular busy man schedule. I would Pretty say. Much, yeah. And, this is usually the type of schedule where people would make the excuse and say, well, I don't have the time. Right. So how are you even able to make that extra income as a wholesaler, if you don't mind going into that? Uh, I think it once again comes from the way I was brought up and just coming from uh, just really hard working and hustling. So, like I said, how I even found out about it, I was working two two jobs. I was working Amazon at night from like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., then I would have to open up Delta Sonic Car Wash at 7 a.m. or 7.30. So I say that to say I work hard, you know, yeah. even it was a seven day a week thing. I wasn't taking no time off. So you you definitely have to have that hustler work ethic. You, you're not yeah. going to get into this and, and think it's, you're going to get money and you lazy about your lifestyle. So that's the mm-hmm. first thing. So like you said, I work a full time job. So either before during and after you working you have to be working on your side hustle so right. i will say that that's really how i'm I'm able to get it in like it's just a fire and, and like yeah. i said real estate has been something that i've been telling myself i want to get into since i was a teenager and it yeah. really clicked when i was in my late 20s and i'm still yeah. telling i was telling myself this at 17 now i'm 27 saying i still want to do this and i i was like well when you gonna do it Cause nobody, mm. there's no college for this. You yep. you literally have to do this on your own. Like, yeah, it it just comes a point in your life where you just like, okay, nobody finna give me this game, or you nope. know, I at least, and even if they give you the game, you have to at least be willing to put in the work to even find the information, retain the information, Absolutely. and put action into it. So really, that action piece is really what's a you know is it got you got to have that fire inside of you really yeah. got to be a hustler. So like yeah. I say, you really, you really can't make excuses. See, listen, for everyone who's watching this, see, this is it's, it's stories like this. This is why we created the 80-20 podcast, because there's a lot of people who say that they want to do things, but they're not putting the action behind it. And what I'm constantly hearing as I'm interviewing these 20 percenters, is that it's the work ethic. So, you know, now granted, I, I you know a lot of us wish we had that, you know, that parent or that fa- that family figure, someone that, you know, is a phone call, text message away. Um, you know, that's that either has like let's say for example, they've accomplished something like in in Dayon's case his dad already knew about real estate, had already been a landlord. So that foundation is already kind of preset. And mm-hmm. if that's the route that Dayon wants to do, 
he can easily say, hey, pops, let's go ahead and have you know this conversation. But I once heard someone say, um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. Right? I, and man, so, I and so you like that one, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Never heard that one, but I like that. <laughs> Because it's true. I really yeah. believe. I believe that. Real yeah. Talk. That's huge, man. That's huge. Let's let's mm -hmm. go into it, man. Because I know people want to talk numbers. We ain't got to go into yeah, it for sure. too much. For sure. But now I know when you was when you and I was having a, a personal conversation talking about wholesaling, you were saying that when you do a deal, it's very it's it pretty much you've never had a deal so far, or on average, night over 90% of your deals are where you can pretty much take home about is was is that number about 10k ish 15k somewhere in that range a little more than that but i okay. I, I would say 15 I, I would say 15 is, is pretty average okay okay yeah. and then so fifteen thousand dollars guys we're talking i won't say spare time because spare time is like you know something you kind of do sparingly but this i would say at least part time and the reason why i'm saying that because i want to set the right expectations for people if you want to have success in something, it's going to take some time from you. That's just how it goes. And and that's just part of the deal. But saying that to say, um, on average, Dayon, what how many deals or how many wholesale deals do you try to close per year? I would say between four and five, uh, one one per quarter. One so per one, quarter. one one every four months or so, something like that. And, and 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 you could do the math on that <laughs> with the average size deal. And, Absolutely. Know. And see, don't worry. And see, this is this is that safe space because we're not here. We're not. We didn't bring Dayon here to talk about necessarily the money that he's made. We we brought Dayon here to more so show you all that he is just another example of setting a goal. And going after that goal. See, this is that's what it's all about. But at the same time, we want to make sure you guys know that it's going to be worth the time that you put into it. Man, fifteen thousand dollars for, um, you know, doing. So let, let's let's go let's go deeper into this. Uh -huh. So let's say, for example, I'm talking to a seller, and you don't have to give us the sauce. I'm not looking for the whole sauce. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say, for example. Because uh, I know our viewers want to at least get an idea of this. Some people, some of you, some of you all have may have heard of wholesaling, but this might be the key or the confirmation you're looking for. If if I'm talking to a seller, or let's say for example you're talking to a seller, like what's the how do you even start off that conversation about them selling their property? Hey Calvin, my name is Dayon. I'm a local home buyer in the area. I would just call to see if you would consider an offer on the property. That's you, you 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 gonna get one of of maybe five or six responses, you know, right. <laughs> and they gonna tell you to go screw yourself. Maybe <laughs> right. no, not yeah. right now. You know, uh, you know the the typical rebuttals, but but that's but that's that's how I'm starting. And I actually shout out to Brent Daniels, those mm. who know of him in the wholesale and real estate world. I actually for the last four years was starting it off. Hey, my name is Dayan. I'm working with a group of local investors, and I was just calling to see if you'd be interested in a cash offer. So he literally dropped the podcast about a week or two ago, mm. and uh, he said he had been using that same script for years. Just like, and he said, man, it was just causing so much resistance, resistance, right. resistance, because it just it sounded sharkish, you mm. know, like like he was yeah. coming out to get. But he, the minute he said he started saying, "I'm a local home buyer." Mm. Instead of saying, hey, I'm working with a group of investors. Would you, would, you know, would you like a cash offer? The minute he switched and said, I'm a local home buyer, the whole conversation switched. And when I say he just dropped this on a podcast about a week and a half ago, the day I heard it, I started implementing it. And I have already, because I, I cold call on a daily, I've already yeah. seen a difference in the responses that I've been getting from sellers as opposed to using that old line. Hey, I'm working with a group of investors. I was calling to see if you'd be interested in the cash off on your property. I went from mm. that to saying, hey, my name is Dayan. I'm a local home buyer. I was just calling to see if you'd be interested in a offer, not a cash off. Would you be interested in a offer on a property? And then, mm. like I said, you're going to get one of maybe five or six responses from there. So wow. that's that's how I open the conversation up. Man, listen, y'all are getting the game. Y'all are getting the game just by yeah. watching this. And yeah. so here, let, let's take a let's take a step back. So now, cold calling, mm -hmm. it's not for everybody. Nope, not at all. 
Not at all. <laughs> this business is not for everybody, you know, right. but, but you got to be a certain type of person, like I say, yeah. you know, to even get into this because you're going to, if you don't take rejection well, this is not for you, mm. you know, because you're going to get 200 no's before you get that one yes. But that one yes is 25, 30,000, 50,000, 15,000 on the, on the end of that yes. So you have to be persistent, you know, so. Yeah, cold calling is not easy at all. It's it's, it's treacherous. Wow, I'll be, I'll be honest. But but you know, so the thing about wholesaling is I combine two forms of marketing, and I would always recommend people to just maybe do one or two forms of marketing and stick with it for about a year, you know, and not bounce around to all oh, her text blasting is working, mm. our whole I heard postcards is working, all oh, her band signs. You can't keep switching up every couple months because you haven't seen success. You right. got to choose one or two marketing strategies and you got to stick with it for at least eight months to a year. Mm. Put your head down, hustle it out because they all work. I've literally yeah. gotten a deal from every form of marketing, driving mm. for dollars, postcards, cold calling, referrals. I've gotten deals from all of it. Mm. But once you stay consistent with one or two, then that's when the consistency of the deal flow is going to come in instead of always bouncing around, trying this and trying that. So my two Real forms cool. are bandit signs and cold calling. So, you know, bandit signs are your typical. You see them on the corner. We buy houses cash. But your phone is not going to ring off the hook from that. You know, you're yeah. not going to get 100 calls a day. So yeah. while I'm waiting on those calls to come in, I have to be proactive while I'm waiting on those calls. So while I'm waiting on those calls to come in, I'm actively cold calling as well. So you combine those two and then boom, you should be able to see some, you know, some traction. Wow. Wow. Yep. And see, I heard so much in that. Uh, one is obviously being consistent, um, you know. And like you said, sometimes, and I know people do this, and I think a lot of people do this in a lot of different industries, um, where if they don't get a certain amount of success within a certain amount of time, they'll assume that it it's just work. not working for them. Yep, it don't work. And like you said, things simply take time. Mm -hmm. So you guys heard it from day on yourself. Things simply take time, guys. Oh, you yeah. know, and finding out, and then also too finding out. What you're willing to stick to, because Deion said exactly, he's gotten deals from all of those forms of marketing. So, man, that's what's up. Is which up. one fits your personality, and which one can you honestly do consistently? If you know you can't consistently cold call, then maybe cold calling isn't for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe texting is for you. Maybe you know postcards are for you. So you, like you said, you have to find a piece of marketing that fits your personality and that fits your schedule to where you know, hey, I can do this an hour a day. I can do this two hours, you know, a day. I can do this twenty hours a week consistently for this amount of time. So you, you, you hit it right on the head. You definitely have to find something that fits your schedule. Wow, you wow, know? that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah. So now let's go into, um. There was something you mentioned, and I, you know, part of it kind of goes into this is first off, wholesale is not for everybody, right? Um, finding out which way of marketing, obviously, you got to find what you like. But I really feel that as I'm interviewing a lot of these 20 percenters, um, people that's at the top of their game in the top in their industry, when I'm starting to notice that you guys are um, very confident, right? And uh, and not arrogant, because I truly believe uh, that because I once heard from one of my mentors that um, arrogance well, no confidence is arrogance under control. Mm, mm, right. OK. And so um, oh, I got him today. I got him. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Fitting, yeah. But 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 no, seriously, saying that to say that a lot of these people that are at the top of their game, they are not just winging it. Right. As you guys, here's things that Dayon has mentioned. He's dropped. He said, hey, I listened to this podcast. I've heard this person say this. I got, you know, so first off, you guys got to be open, but it's not just about being open. You also have to make sure you guys have the right attitude. And that's why I always get the top books um, that these people are, uh, that they're listening to or reading. So what are your top uh, personal development books? Just give me a couple. So this one right here put me on fire. 
Uh, it's called Extreme Ownership. I literally just finished reading this book a few days ago, and wow. it's it's literally about what the you know what the title is: Extreme Ownership, taking ownership for everything that happens in your personal life yeah. and your business life, making no excuses. Everything is your fault, whether it was something mm -hmm. good or whether it was something bad. So I'm trying to become a better leader as mm. far as my business, and I'm trying to become a better person in my personal life for my yeah. family, for myself, for my fiance, yeah. and things like that. So yeah. taking extreme ownership and not making excuses for when something happens bad or happens good, this book, man, it hit it right on the head. <laughs> so I would recommend everybody wow. read Extreme Ownership. Um, Another one is, of course, uh, a, a staple in the real estate industry is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, mm. That was one I read maybe two years ago. I keep that one in the trunk. So when okay. I'm on, you know, when I'm at work and I'm on lunch and I need some, I need to feed my brain. I could just pop my trunk, open that book, read that. Um, and then yeah. the third one is uh, one that I read in college that I just recently read about a year ago, too, is How to Win Friends and Influence People. That mm. one is a game changer as well. And that one right there also will help you if you are in the sales business, you know, just learning how what people how, how you can win friends and influence people pretty much, you know, yeah. saying somebody's name repeatedly. People love to hear their name said, you mm. know, talking about people's accomplishments. People love to hear about themselves. Those are just some of the things that are in that book that'll just once again help you in not just your business life, but your personal life. So mm. those are three books. I promise you, if you read those three books, you 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 will become a better person or in a bit in a better business person as well. Man, that's huge, man. Yeah, that's huge. You know, it's crazy. Those three are fire. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure, man. You know, and it's, what's crazy is I think people. Um, I I still feel like Rich Dad Poor Dad is one of the most talked about books, but mm -hmm. I still feel like it's underrated because people are hear about it and and then still not go buy it. You know, and you got to. and yeah, and it's and what's crazy, I've heard that, and I ne I haven't confirmed this, but I've heard that Rich Dad Poor Dad is in one of the top is in the top ten best selling books of all time, close to the Bible. Okay, I I, I can really <laughs> I could imagine for real is yeah. I mean I'm always hearing about it when I'm listening to these podcasts, and like I said, I read that book years ago, and I it's always still on people's top list. Yeah. for books to read, you know, mm -hmm. and like I say, you know, for me, it's not even necessarily about real estate. It's just gems in that book about life, you know, yeah. with, in all of these three books that I mentioned, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad will definitely get your mind right for sure. For wow. sure. Yeah. Wow. That's what's yeah. up. And then also, I want to make sure I don't miss that third book. And I man, it was crazy. This book is actually very popular at colleges in general, That's because I, I remember... Like. And I remember being in uh, at college, and I remember um, I can't. I think it was for my marketing class, and That's how I found out about yeah. it. Yeah, marketing <laughs> class. So yeah, I think every marketing class, uh, prop or or, or uh, some type of course or whatever professor yeah. I should say um, would recommend this book. And that was another book that I think because uh, it's Dale Carnegie. Was it Dale Carnegie that wrote this book? I, see, I never no, finished. Yeah. So okay, I, know, okay, I never finished you. school. I, so you know, I was yeah. in there, but I ain't finished. So that's. <laughs> By the I way, Dayon and myself, we have not finished college, guys. So yeah, I didn't even know you. that about you. I didn't even know you didn't finish college. Oh, no, no, no. So I went to NIU. Me too. And um, I was, uh, what happened was I actually started working, I, start, I actually started working with a network marketing company uh, my second year in college. And he saw something in me that even though he was recruiting me, essentially, uh, he saw something in me that I that I won't say I didn't see in myself, but he mm -hmm. kind of confirmed like what that was, and it was just giving me an open business platform. Either way, we had a lot of success in that company, and but in the while I was kind of going, when I was with that company at the time, my, the the after a year of me being with that company, I started saying to myself, um, "What what do I want to do with my life?" Right. And um, long story short, the, my marketing professor. Now, again, there's, there's no shade to any professor or how much money you're making or whatever. This was just me at the time. I was a manager at McDonald's as well. And mm -hmm. um, I switched my major from electrical engineering technology. I was always a handsy person into mm -hmm. tech and stuff like that. Okay. But And the, the classes were great, but it was kind of boring. And I was doing well in school. Long story short, did that. Um, 
first first off, this ain't about me. This is about Dayon, but I'm at least yeah, no. Down. I mean, I'm 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 intrigued. I'm interested because um, we got a similar. Like, I went to NIU yeah. as well and didn't finish, so I I didn't wow. even know that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's where I met my now fiance. Y'all, that's where I met Ashley. Man, yep. did not know she that. Finished, so <laughs> what? So what year did y'all go? I was there 2011. We both got there 2011, wow. and she graduated about 2014. So we okay. were both there about that. I think we left about 2015 ish, somewhere in there. Yup. But wow. I had been dropped out probably about 2012, 2013. I yeah. was only there. I ran out of money. What wasn't focused yeah. and yeah, just, you know, just going through yeah. about life. But I say that to say too, don't let that hold you back because hey, hey I'm successful in my own right. Like you right. said, I work a full time right. job, got a healthy. You know, beautiful family. I yeah. got a little wholesaling thing, you know, on the side. So yeah. any of y'all out there that's in college and it didn't work out, don't be mad. Just capitalize on it and that's make right. sure that your story, you in your story saying, hey, I didn't finish college, but look at me now. You know, that's right. So. That's right. And and not only that, it's but see, guys, it's got it got to come. It come with like what Dayan just mentioned. And all of that won't happen unless you have that work ethic, you yep. know, and that you're reading books. There are people I know that um, have, whether they graduated college or, or not, but they're not working on themselves. They feel like they're done, right, working on themselves <laughs> because they have the degree and say, hey, because I have this, this is why you should hire me or promote me or pay me X amount of dollars. It's, they want to know what type of person you are, right? Because yeah. that's the long term. But yeah. either way, um, but yeah, that was that was a short end. But well, yeah, I forgot to finish that story. I was either way, I was a ma- I was a manager at McDonald's, and my marketing professor at the time was coming through the driveway in this beat up, like it was beat. It was like a Honda Civic. It was like maybe 15, 20 years old, and it was like loud. It was it was crazy. Oh, and so I was like, man, and I could tell because I always knew how that he dressed, like he dressed a certain way too. Don't get me wrong. I get I get being frugal, but this wasn't frugal. This was <laughs> this was this was struggling. Okay, right. <laughs> so and I and again, I don't know about you guys. And don't get me wrong. Everybody's gonna have moments in their life where they're struggling, but no, I'm not. To, I can't. It's only so much marketing advice I can get from someone that's struggling. So, right. No, for real. <laughs> so I say, you know what? I don't want to. Here and this had nothing. To, I won't say too much to do with him. This didn't have much to do with him. This was more of a. I wanted to make sure that I listened to people that gave me um, their that, that spoke from a level of experience than speaking from a level of theory. Mm. Okay, and because it's easy for someone to say, "Hey, this book, this is this," and right. not that all professors do that, because there's a lot of professors who have been in the in, whatever industry they're in and they just happen to become a professor, right? Mm, that's true. But that's there's true. a lot of professors who have never practiced what, what they, they are on. talking about, right? Yeah. They're just good at talking about it. Mm. And I felt like, okay, let me take a break from school. I want to be in some sort of sales or business. And I kind of feel like I didn't need college to do that. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and do this. And of course, the rest was history, but it's it's so much more to that. But this is not yeah. my time. It's yeah. Time. So no, that's but, no, that's 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 really interesting, and and that's a good yeah. point that you made. A lot of yeah. people feel like that. Like I'm looking at these professors talk about stuff that they're not yeah. even doing. You're not even a business owner, and you're talking yeah. about business, or you, you know, you never even worked in this field. But like you said, you could be good at it. So. Hey, that's yeah. like you say, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. It right? is, man. And I do want to be yeah. clear too, guys. Y'all know me. Y'all been watching the channel for years. Um, we never, we're not, we never knock in college. We need our professors, our for doctors, sure. our nurse. We need those people to have those professions. However, we're talking about the y'all know who you are. People that's that's you're in school and you should not be in school. Not that you shouldn't be in school because you don't necessarily want to be in school, but you know for a fact you wasting that you wasting that money. Okay. That was me. That was me. I knew I didn't want to be there. I knew at the age I was there that that wasn't even what I wanted yeah. to do. And I was there for accounting. And I yeah. knew it just, like you said, yeah. you just know when you know, you know, especially as an adult. I can yeah. understand you 16, 17, you're impressionable, you listen to your parents. But yeah. I went to NIU, I was 22, 23 years old. So yeah. I already kind of knew where I wanted to go. And I knew that that really, so the passion wasn't there. The, my work ethic wasn't there in school, so it, it didn't pan out. And that's usually how it goes, <laughs> you know, when wow. your heart 
and your and you know you're not there, yeah. it's just not gonna work out. It's not you gonna work out. Temporary success, but it's not gonna work out long term. Yeah, yeah, and it's and that's the thing. We're just we are for those who are watching this. We are just again just examples of you know what you can do or that you. It's not the end of the road because I'm not you know because that's different. Obviously, different age groups that watch this channel. And it's not the end of it, right? It's it's how you end that story or what you're going through. Don't let that be the end of your story, like Dayon had mentioned. So uh, that's great stuff, man. This is man, this is a, a, a great uh, time here, man. I'm, I'm glad you was able to kind of carve out that time today, man. We greatly appreciate that, man. No, I, I appreciate you having me on. Like I said, and you know, my story isn't over with. I struggle as well. You know, yeah. everybody always here. One thing I do want to say is that word consistency is really yeah. true. You you mentioned it before. But consistency is a reason why I'm not even at where I would want to be. Yes, I have some success in wholesaling, but that consistency thing is so true to where, you know, if you're not doing it, it you know, that habit thing is really a big thing uh, aspect as well. Because when you don't feel like doing something, when it's a habit, yeah. you, you do it because it's a habit. You 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 know, you don't have to feel like doing it, but it's just, I don't feel like going yeah. to work, but it's a habit. You know, I'm. I don't feel like getting up, but it's just a yeah. habit of me getting up at six in the morning. Yeah. So that yeah. habit and that consistency is going to over trump your emotions. Yeah. And, you know, if you're having a slump day, you know, that's really the, you know, the key aspect of it. So, you know, I just want to let people know my story isn't done. You know, I want everybody to follow me on my journey because I'm still trying to get to the point where I see me. I know I want to be a full time entrepreneur. I'm not quite there yet. I work full time and I'm a part time with, with wholesaling. But I do want to get to the point where I'm wholesaling full time because I look up to people that's wholesaling full time and I want to live the life that they live in. You know, and I, <laughs> and I already got my life detailed and, you know, you know, mapped yeah. out. So, you know, I, I just want to put that out there. No, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, you know, we kind of talked about this uh, as well, is that, you know, I think that a lot of people, especially like we mentioned, like in 2020, 2021, I think people were kind of, they felt like they were kind of pushed, you know, into um, not only that entrepreneurial conversation, but I think the uh, the opposite was that, or the other side of that was people were making people, and I don't know, I'm sure a lot of people didn't intentionally do this but there are some people who may be intentional um where they made people feel bad if they were not entrepreneurs and yeah. first off i feel it too everything is not for everybody entrepreneurship is yeah. not for everybody some people some people are terrible at working at a job mm -hmm. like they don't they, yeah. they they never come in on time they you know so yeah <laughs> so they need there to are be certain things people. that just don't work for certain people yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I like, like you said, we mentioned it before, and I definitely feel the same way within like these last two years since the pandemic. Yeah. As yeah. far as like us in our black community, I feel yeah. like we was pushing so heavy to just be entrepreneurs, 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 and that's just not for everybody. You know, it's not for everybody. We need every, we need every aspect of yeah. of the cycle. We need employees. You know, yeah. we need entrepreneurs. So I think you know a little bit goes a long way as far as knowing what you want and active. You know, being active yeah. on what you want, and I and I, I I pretty much can guarantee if you work on it every single day, you that's be right. consistent, you have that work ethic like we was talking about earlier, you yeah. will be successful in your own right. And and like I, said, I continue to say in my own right, because my level of success is not measured by somebody else. Right. I know what I want to accomplish. I don't necessarily need a Lamborghini, a 12 yeah. bedroom house. But for me, my success might be totally different from somebody else's success. So, you know, as long as you can stay grounded, reading these, you know, books will help you understand like, what do you really want out of this? What do you really want out of yeah. life? Why are you doing this? Is it for bragging rights? Is it to look good on social media? Or is it to actually make money so that you can do the things for you and your family that you really want to do? So, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man, listen. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm glad that, of course, we have that platform uh, to just, the way you guys can see the day on, I know. Okay. Oh yeah, this, this is dope. <laughs> I, I, I like this. You know, you got my full support anytime, yeah. anytime. You got my number, man, and we yeah. definitely gonna get together. I was telling you about your son and that golf. I need him. Oh to man, me. I was terrible yeah. at top golf a few weeks ago. So, <laughs> no, nah, but no. Nah, yeah, you know it's crazy, man. You know, um, 
there's a guy um, that just left the office um, that started off watching our YouTube channel. And um, we, I, I, I guess we kind of motivated him in a sense to get into real estate at some point. And um, he joined the brokerage today. And um, but it's not necessarily just about that. It's about the fact that I know that there are people, there are 20 percenters, there are people, the vital few, right, that have their goals, they want to accomplish them, they're, they're getting after it. And that and that's what it's all about. And yeah. uh, but then also to sidebar, there's a um, there's a lot of people, too, if like that are local, that have no idea that the YouTube channel even exists. They just like us locally. And then there's people. Mm. Yeah. Then there's people who uh, watch us on YouTube that don't even know that we can help them on a local basis. Right. So, so we're not all I say that to say I'm never trying to just say, hey, look at me. Um, it's more so get the information okay. um, and then it turns into something. But uh, yeah, I, I'm going to start because uh, they don't man, they don't know too much about my son uh golfing i gotta start putting some of these videos um Seriously. up here but. <laughs> he gonna be something if he's he working man he must, yeah if he, he keep working yeah he definitely gonna be something nice i love to yeah. see that man i love to see you know what you're doing as far as being a father Thanks, entrepreneur man. because you you know we need you we need that yeah. image out there you know yeah. young, young black father active with his son i'm active yeah. with my daughter so you yeah. know that image definitely needs to be out there so i encourage you too you know, yeah. put, you know, put, put that content out there, you know, with your son, for sure. <laughs> Most definitely, man. Most definitely. And then also too, as we wrap up, um, what's next for you, Dayon? What, what, what should we, is there anything we should be prepared to see soon or what's next? Uh, so, you know, if you follow my social medias, it's really just me on my journey. So what's next for me is like I just mentioned a little while ago, me going full time with real estate, full time with wholesaling specifically, me firing my boss, firing my job and just living that, that the life that I would want to live. So that's that's that that's what's next for me, man, is it, really just working hard to the point where I can just quit my nine to five and go full time with, uh, you know, with, with wholesaling. So, yeah. you know, like I say, stay tuned, watch my social media is, is not me, you know, really doing too much other than just working in the wholesaling. You see me making calls, you see me putting out my bandit signs, you see the ups, yeah. you see the downs, the deals that fall apart, the deal. I'm not just going to show you a check for 15. I'm going I'm to show you and talk to you about these deals that fall apart. You know, the real grittiness, the ins and outs of this business. So that's pretty much what it is with me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, again, thanks again, Dayon. We appreciate you taking out the time uh, for Absolutely. the 8020 podcast today, man. And then as we leave, uh, is there anything you want to leave everyone with? Man, uh, stay positive. You know, I believe positive things happen to positive people. Um, stay positive. You know, have that fire inside of you, whatever that fire is inside of you, whatever it is you want to do, believe in it. Put your head down. Don't matter who talking down about you. Just stay, mm. stay the course, stay consistent and stay active. That's all I want to say. Stay consistent and stay active in whatever it is you want to do. Start today, today, Absolutely. right now. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, again, thanks again, man. We greatly appreciate you being on the 8020 podcast, man. You have a good one. All right. You too. All right. Holla.